All right, Troop Strong and Conditioned, live and direct from Glasgow, Scotland. Guys, guys, it's been a while, but it's an absolute pleasure to have you back. Anyway, what is the premise for today's video? Well, the premise is six harsh truths that you burpee guys better get your heads around if you want to make this game fruitful, productive, and something that you can enjoy the benefits from and also becoming a better buppy practitioner over time. Now, these are harsh truths that I have come to realise after a few years of performing this hated exercise, this absolutely reviled exercise, this exercise that seems to cause more controversy than, I don't know, a two live crew cover back in the 90s. Anyway, I digress. Let's get to the fucking brass tacks, guys. Let's just get to the shit because that's how I roll. Anyway, guys, number one, stomach strike. The harsh truth is the stomach strike is an exercise that you need to take seriously if you choose to perform it. If you choose to perform the stomach strike, then you need to go all in on that bad boy. What do I mean by that, though? What do I mean by that? Number one, if you are performing the stomach strike then you need to make sure that you're hitting those abs hard. Too many guys I see almost giving themselves a wee joyful belly rub. It's almost like, I need to do the stomach strike, but I don't want to hit my abs hard, but I want to make my burpees look cool. Fuck that noise. If you're hitting those abs, hit them hard. And when I say hit them hard, you should be hitting them so hard that particularly if you're a burpee beginner, you are seeing bruising around the abdominal area the next day. Now, I'm not saying that you should beat yourself up, but I'm saying that you should hit them with a degree of vigour because that's going to get you into the right mindset when you perform the next rep. You need to hit those abs hard because if you hit them hard, you're naturally going to flex your abs and tighten up your glutes before you launch into the next burpee. If you're hitting them like someone, like a three-year-old hitting his father, then you're going to kind of be nice and loose because you're not really using the stomach strike for what it's intended. You're just kind of doing it because you see other guys on Instagram reels or YouTube shorts and they're hitting their abs and you're thinking, that looks kind of cool, I need to do that before I do my burpees. No, use it the way it's intended. Use it to flex the abs, flex the glutes before you launch into the burpee. And you also need to use it for its metronome qualities. You need to use it as that timing tool to launch into the next burpee. Now, I don't see the point of doing a stomach strike if you're jogging between reps. The stomach strike, for me, comes into play if you are going in that locomotion style. Therefore, as soon as you're getting up into that standard position, bang those abs straight back down. It's the metronome. It's giving us that degree of rest before we launch into the next rep, while at the same time getting our body prepared to perform the rep. So if you're going to perform the stomach strike, get it right. It is not an aesthetic quality to make burpees look good. It is there for a reason if you choose to use it. If you don't choose to use it, that's fair enough. You don't have to. But if you choose to use it, do the fucking stomach strike right. Hit those fucking abs hard, man. That's what it's intended for. Fucking hit them. Honestly, it'll do you the world of good. It'll probably knock some fucking sense into you before your next burpee. All right, guys, number two. Number two, technique sessions. Technique sessions are vital. They are so important. Why are you doing an exercise which is relatively technique heavy, but not practicing the technique itself? The problem with burpees is, is that you get intoxicated by performing them and you think, I need to beat my last session. I need to make sure I get this amount of numbers which is all very well, that's going to get you fit as fuck, but there's got to be times where you've got to take the stress away, you've got to take the stress off your shoulders and think to yourself, I'm going to focus on technique, like exercises like, burpees like six counts, for example, are quite technique heavy, to be performed properly, you need to ensure that every point of contact is pristine, it's absolutely pristine, you need to make sure that body is tight, on every point of contact or you're going to come into issues down the line. If your back's sagging, for example, you're going to end up with a fucking spine issue. You're going to end up with mere slipped discs. So if that's something you're looking to avoid, then it makes sense to throw in that technique session once a week just to make sure that all bases are covered. So for example, if you have five burpee sessions a week 
And for example, you think, right, one of these days I'm going to focus on burpee technique. I'm just going to focus on my six counts. I'm going to take it nice and slow. I'm going to make sure every count's done at every point of contact. I'm going to make sure I'm absorbing every point of contact. I'm going to ensure... I'm going to ensure that muscle memory is taking place during every point of contact because I want my six counts to look beautiful. I want them to look like a thing of beauty, something that would not look out of place in the Louvre, something that would not look out of place in the fucking art galleries in Glasgow. You want to make them beautiful because that's the good thing about puppies, the aesthetic. They look good as well when they're performed properly. And if you can nail the technique on a six count, then the next port of call was an eight count. Then the next port of call was an AV seal. Once you start to absorb every point of contact and your technique becomes pristine, then you can start to really play about with the technique. You can start to do the cycle style up here. You can start to do your kickouts. Everything just becomes a thing of beauty and you go into every up here with a degree of confidence because you know you can do it. Because not only are you trying to smash numbers and get yourself fit as fuck, but you're also trying to make your burpees look good. You're trying to make them feel good. Good, and you're trying to make them as efficient, as efficient as possible. And you'll learn more about the burpee in that respect. You'll create your own burpee. And when I say create your own burpee, what I mean is, is that you'll take the six count and make it your own. Because everybody knows we have our own flourish in a burpee. Max Edwards' burpees look different from my six count. David Whitten's burpees look different from mine. So they've always got that wee name card. They've always got that wee signature on them. So you need to create your own signature and technique sessions will allow you to do that. And as I already mentioned, they take the pressure off burpees because the burpees are a scary exercise. We've all been sitting in work one day and we've been thinking, shit, I need to do like 300 fucking burpees. Like, oh, no, no one's gone into that session thinking to themselves, I cannot wait to do 300 burpees, particularly beginners. They're shitting themselves. They're shitting themselves. So have that session where you're not shitting yourself. Have that session where you're going on have that session where you're going in footless and fancy free and you can have a bit of fun because we need to have a bit of fun in the process as well, guys. That's how we stick to shit. That's why we have a cheat meal with my hardcore diet and just to kind of keep us on track because we know the mind plays tricks with us. So do that technique heavy session once a week, twice a week, whichever's good for you, but get the technique sessions and they're so important. All right, number three, numbers are only metrics. Don't get caught up in the numbers too much, particularly during the beginner phase. People always come to me and they will always ask, how many burpees should I do? How many fucking burpees should I do? How long should I rest? And they're just getting soaked up in the numbers. And what it really is, is it's fear. It's fear. They want to be guided through the process because they're just too scared to get up off the fucking couch and start the process themselves because your body is not counting burpees. It doesn't count burpees. Your body doesn't go... We just did 25 burpees there. That means that we have to elicit a certain... It's all bollocks, man. You just need to do burpees. Now, numbers are only metrics. They can be used to record progress. But your body's not counting those burpees. Your burpees... Your body's only feeling the pain. It's only feeling the pain, the fatigue, the, the brutality. That's all you should be focusing on getting your body through the ringer, performing the burpees, getting better at burpees over time, and then bringing the numbers into play when you start to become adept, and then using the numbers to record your progress. So don't get caught up in the numbers too much. It will take your eye off the prize, and it will turn the process into a more laborious one with a lot of stress, a lot of trepidation, and we don't want that. We want to be going into our burpee sessions feeling good. We want to go into our burpee sessions without a care in the world. We want to go into our burpee sessions because we enjoy fucking burpees. So don't turn that into some fucking algebra test. Don't turn that into a fucking exam. Just get down and do the fucking burpees, guys. Number four, protect your wrists. Now, this is one thing that always dumbfounds me, and it's the lack of wrist protection I see, guys, with performing burpees. If you want to stay in this game for a long time, if you want your wrists to stay in good condition so you can keep performing burpees, then you need to get yourself a pair of wrist wraps. You need to tighten up and get as much support in those wrists as possible. It is not an embarrassment to wear wrist wraps. It is a form of protection to ensure that a very vulnerable body part is being protected so that we can perform more of the exercise 
which we know and love. You need to fucking wear wrist straps. Get yourself a pair of wrist straps. And if you cannot get a pair of wrist straps, figure out a way to protect your wrists because at some point your wrists are going to fucking come a cropper, man. Honestly, your wrists are like fucking glass at times and you better keep that in mind when you're performing burpees and if you want to perform burpees for a certain length of time if you want to be able to perform more burpees in a session before starting to get niggly little injuries then you need to invest in a pair of wrist wraps okay guys number five and this is one that i i cannot ram home enough you've heard me talk about it so many times and it's that you need to balance burpees out with other exercises you really do. The burpee is primarily, from a muscle viewpoint, it's a pushing exercise. Therefore, it is insane not to have pulling exercises to complement it. It's insane not to have squats to complement it. It's insane not to have hip hinges to complement it. Because you want to create a well-rounded, efficient machine. Now, case in point, it's like these fucking maniacs that buy a BMW that stay in the north of Europe or countries where it snows. They get a BMW, it's costing them 65 fucking grand or about 500 or 600 quid a month. And it starts snowing and the car is out of commission because it's rear wheel drive. It cannot drive in the fucking environment. It cannot drive in that surface. So they've got this fucking car that's, that, that's amazing, but all it takes is one change of conditions and the car is fucked. And that's the same with your body. Great, you can do burpees, you can do a thousand burpees, but you cannot do two chin-ups. That's a serious imbalance. That is serious and that's something that you need to... That's something that you need to work on. You need to make sure that your pulling exercises are complementing your pushing exercises. And we do that by having a more balanced approach. Now, I'm not saying that you have to do a full body weight routine every single day, but you need to make sure you're getting your pulling exercises in there. If you can't do chin-ups, you can do inverted rows. If you can't do inverted rows, you do table rows. But you find something. There's plenty of fucking resources out there to find something that's going to allow you to activate those pulling muscles and get them as strong as the pushing muscles will become during high volume burpee sessions. Same with squats. Don't just stick to burpee sessions. Add squat chasers in. Add lunge chasers in. Add jump squats in. There's a lot of options out there, but you need to create that balanced routine at the same time because you do not want to be overloading one muscle group on a daily basis. And at the same time, you want to create that well-rounded machine. So always balance the burpees out with other exercises. It's so important. Now, last harsh truth is... It's a personal one. It's just, this is an opinion. It's not something that a lot of people will take too nicely. But it is, if you are getting involved in the burpee lifestyle, then you better go all fucking in. You need to go all in on this shit. Now, the reason why I say that is because people dip their toe into the burpee world. They'll dip their toe and they think that burpees are going to cover everything. They still think that they can eat like shit. They still think that they don't have to drink as much water throughout the day. They still think they can do things like have a fucking five beers a night, but boppies are going to take care of everything. That's not happening, guys. That is not happening. If you're going to do the boppy, then you need to go all in on that shit and you need to make sure that your nutrition is on point, your hydration is on point, your recovery is on point. You need to go all fucking in in the process and my dog agrees that's why he's barking go all in make sure your diet is fucking spot on what is the point what is the point of doing such a hard exercise style and fucking it up by nipping down a kfc at the end of a session to get your 20 hot wings and your two full fat cokes complete waste of time you're drinking two glasses of water a day come on to fuck you're a burpee machine. You need to fuel those burpees. You need to make sure you are absolutely hydrated. You need to make sure you're getting your electrolytes in. You need to make sure that you've got all bases covered. There is no point indulging in this exercise style if you're going to fuck it up with stupid choices afterwards thinking, yeah, I did my burpees, man, so like, I can probably like, treat myself. I deserve it. You deserve jack shit. No one deserves anything in that respect. You need to fucking go all in. If you're doing burpees, get the diet right. Pick a diet style. I don't care, carnivore, vegan, eating clean. I do not give a fuck. But if you're going to do it, go all in. Let it consume you. Make sure you're getting those electrolytes in. Make sure you're getting good sleep. Make sure everything 
Everything is designed to make you a better boppy practitioner and you are not going to become a better boppy practitioner if you are stuffing your face in fucking subways and iron brew at the end of the day. It's not going to happen, guys. Make sure you are all in because you need to complement this exercise with the necessary decisions to ensure that it is not a waste of time. Anyway, guys, bit of a rant there, but these are the six harsh truths that I'm sure a lot of you guys already know. But it's always good to hear them again. Anyway, guys, it's been an absolute pleasure. Hopefully we're back over time. It's good to get another video out there. Thanks for staying strong and thanks for staying fucking conditioned.